The High Line is located in the southwest region of Manhattan in Chelsea, New York. It lies close to the Hudson River. The north end of the line starts up by the Lincoln Tunnel, whereas the south end stretches down near Greenwich Village. The New York High Line has had a long history even before the start of its construction in 2006. In 1929, New York City agreed on an urban development project entitled the West Side Imp Improvement Project, which also included today's West Side Highway. The project was formulated by Robert Moses, an American public official who mainly worked in the New York metropolitan area. The 13-mile project eliminated 105 railroad crossings and it cost about $150 million, which is over $2 billion today. Another part of that plan was the High Line Viaduct, which opened to trains in 1934. The trains, which were designed to go through the center of, the, of blocks, would run from 34th Street to Spring Street. Most of the time, since the rail did not run over the street, the trains would carry meat, produce, and other cargo to factories and warehouses so as not to dis disturb street traffic. During the 1950s, there was a rise in interstate trucking, so rail traffic was less convenient for transporting goods. Which is why, by 1960, the southernmost section, accounting for nearly half the line, was destroyed. Then, in the mid-1980s, a group of lobbyists and landowners demanded the entire line be demolished. Many people were in favor, but others did not approve. Citizens challenged the demolition efforts in court, but they had no luck. In the 1990s, the line lay unused and in disrepair, and it was scheduled for demolition under former Mayor Rudy Giuliani's administration. By 1999, a nonprofit organization called Friends of the High Line was formed to preserve the High Line and to reopen it so it could be used as an elevated park and public area. It was co-founded by Joshua David and Robert Hammond and inspired by the Promenade Planté in Paris, France. Quote, I first fell in love with the High Line from the street. I love the structure, the rivets, but then when I walked up there, there was a mile and a half of wildflowers running right through the city. That's what I really fell in love with, the combination of this wild landscape on top of this industrial structure in the middle of the city." End quote. Many public meetings were held where the topic of saving the High Line came up often. Five years later, there was increasing community support for pedestrian use of the High Line, and the New York City government committed $50 million with city council speakers and Mayor Bloomberg being some of the big supporters. $150 million was eventually raised in total, and on April 10, 2006, a ceremony was held to mark the beginning of construction. Section 1 opened on June 28, 2009, Section 2 on June 7, 2011, and the final section opening on September 21, 2014. As of July this year, Chelsea is the 11th most expensive neighborhood to live in in New York City, with a median sale price of nearly $1.5 million. The neighborhood is mostly residential, with an assortment of tenements and townhouses, populating over 38,000 people. As of 2015, there has been an enlarging income gap between the rich and the poor, so some of the wealthier residents even live across the street from lower income citizens. The High Line has provided so many benefits to the neighborhood of Chelsea and the city of New York, including a more modernized look because of gentrification in the area and thousands of citizens and tourists visiting daily. Since the first section of the park opened in 2009, the High Line has made a huge impact on citizens in the surrounding area. In the late 20th century, 
Chelsea was generally poor and not in good condition. The construction of the line since then has spurred neighborhood development and the construction of various other projects. It has also encouraged a lot of real estate development in West Chelsea. Real estate values have increased significantly because of the High Line, drawing in wealthier residents. The average apartment in a building adjacent to the urban park sells for about $6 million, with others even selling for upwards of $10 million. Many buildings in the area are now luxury apartments. The neighborhood above 23rd Street is mainly post-industrial. Because of the High Line, Chelsea has experienced a boom in construction and the rapid development of many new projects by several different architects. Chelsea has gentrified very quickly and smaller businesses have been replaced by fashion and retail stores. This change also caused wealthy residents to move in, widening the income gap even more. However, some well-established businesses in West Chelsea were forced to close due to loss of neighborhood customer base or rent increases. In 2015, the yearly household income for much of Chelsea was around $140,000 on average. However, in other parts, the average income was only around $30,000. At the northern side of Chelsea is the Hudson Yards redevelopment project, which contains almost 13 million square feet and 16 skyscrapers for residential, office, and retail space. Most people living right by the High Line have had nothing but positive remarks. However, some believe the urban park became a, quote, tourist-clogged catwalk, end quote, since it opened. Other residents have complained that Chelsea has become too expensive and touristy now that it is home to the High Line and several different art museums. Co-founder of Friends of the High Line, Robert Hammond, has expressed disappointment because he believes the line has not fulfilled its purpose of serving the neighborhood of Chelsea. One positive outcome of the High Line so far has been the low crime rate. Soon after the opening of the second section of the park, there were no reports of serious crimes such as robbery or murder. Because of the line's popularity, many plans have emerged towards the construction of more art museums. As for the future of the High Line, many plans have been made in order to make the urban park more appealing to its visitors. One idea is to cut away steel by 10th Avenue and replace it with glass so citizens can look down at street level to see traffic and pedestrians. More plants and shrubs will also be planted in the areas where the High Line begins to narrow. Additional staircases and elevators will also be implemented so there are more entry and exit points for visitors to access. The High Line's lawn area will also open up for people to sit so they can relax while taking in the view of Chelsea. Finally, a sumac forest will, will be placed where the surrounding buildings begin to get taller. This will provide a much cooler and shadier area for people walking to embrace the scenery around them. Certain landscape architects believe that elevated urban parks, such as the High Line, are uncommon elsewhere because building a park like that requires a structure of neighborhoods in the area in order to flourish. Prior to the construction of the High Line, Chelsea was struggling, but mostly due to outdated apartment and office buildings. Following the line's construction, many other architects decided to replace those old buildings with something more contemporary thus creating a more modern neighborhood for all its residents and incoming tourists. The implementation of, of urban renewal projects in Manhattan, New York, specifically Chelsea, demonstrate the cultural significance of urban renewal because an increasing number of cities nationally are expanding and creating more modernized buildings, parks, and residential areas. The success of the High Line has inspired and persuaded leaders of other major U.S. cities as well, from Chicago's Bloomingdale Trail to Philadelphia's Rail Park to Atlanta's Belt Line. Other cities around the world plan to create similar parks 
with one writer calling it the Highline Effect.